All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Today, I'm back inside the studio. Got myself a big canvas. Now, it wasn't that long ago I was on a plein air painting trip down the coast, and I got some beautiful fleeting little paintings. I'll just grab one. I've got one over here for reference. Just some things like this. So it's a nice colour study. Uh, beautiful calm water, cliffs, reflections, the whole thing. So what I'm going to use that as a colour. I've also got a lot of video footage and some still footage. I'll, all, I'll use that as reference and I'll compose a big picture here. Now this is going to be mainly the colours I'm using. Let's put that back there so I can see it from a distance. That'll be my inspiration for the colours because I find that usually the videos or the stills don't have that quality of light. They don't pick up the subtlety that you get when you're on site plain air. So that little painting over there is perfect for what I want. All right, so what I'm going to do is, as usual, work with these big uh, tins of oil paint. Fantastic stuff. Allows you to use plenty of paint and I've got the palette knives that I'll be painting with on a nice stretch canvas. Now the bonus with this stuff is that once you take heaps of paint out and you've got heaps of paint to use so you're not being too stingy, any paint that's left over that's still clean, provided it didn't, hasn't been left out too long, you can just pick it back up, drop it back in the tin, bang the tin down flat, it sends all the paint flat so you get a nice flat surface again, and hammer it down. Now I find if you have it flat like that, even if you leave the paint a few months and it may get a slight skin, it usually doesn't because I paint more often than that, but if it does get a slight skin because you've banged it flat, then you've got an easy skin to peel off instead of having a whole mountain range in there. So <laughs> that's a pretty good tip for that one. All right, so I'll get the paint out and we'll get started. We'll start with this ultramarine blue, I reckon. That's a beautiful color. Okay, so I just use one of these. It's a great thing. You can lift the lid with it, but also tap it down when you're finished. Perfect for what we need. All right, so we'll scoop out plenty of blue. There we go, look at that. Fantastic stuff. Like I said, we'll put plenty on. We won't be stingy. We want to play a nice painting. We want plenty of color. Okay, so I've got a cartridge here to release the paint. That's also not a bad thing. Okay, now here's something I do a lot of. What I've got here is I've just put a couple of yellow ochre marks just to get me started, an idea on what I'm going to be painting. But now there's going to be a broad open horizon on this and I find using tape. Sure, you can do it by eye, but Tape is a really good way to get it right. Now, I want my horizon to be, let's have a look, around about there. So what I'll do is I'll just get this uh, tape off. Just drop that there for a minute. All right, now, I'm not satisfied with just that because I can see it's not straight. So I'll measure here because that's what I want. So that one there should be what I'm doing here. Let's have a look. Go to that there. Lay that on there. Right, so you can see that's got me a straight horizon. So what I'll do is I'll just block into that, peel it off straight away. It'll be all go. Good little tip for just... See, the problem is, like, you can work with a really big, broad painting, and that's fantastic, but if you've got a broad painting and the horizon is slightly crooked, well, it's going to haunt the painting forever after to come. So I find you get things like that very accurate at the start. As soon as it's in, you can be broad, you can do whatever you want, but at the same time, the picture's going to be balanced. It's always going to be balanced from the start. So. That's a good way to make sure that it's all there and everything's flowing perfectly. All 
Okay, now I've got my horizon. What I'll do is just, with a little bit of dark, I just want to compose this picture now, so. It'll come down something like so. Just feeling it, like this is not exactly how it's going to be at the end. It's just giving myself a bit of a feeling on what I'm after. So we'll scoof that around that way. Jeez, it's wild and windy out there. I don't know if you can hear it, but. It'll open up like so. It'll run in that way. Just give myself a bit of feeling as to what's happening. So these are just the lines of the composition in my head that I'm seeing. It's kind of going to have a bit of a headland jutting out here. Nice bit of morning light striking. This is all in shadow through here. Okay, so you can see something starting to form and that's how I like to work. Not too exact, just feeling the shapes. Once I'm happy with where they are, then I can reinforce them. Can reinforce the shape once I'm happy that I'm convinced that it's in the right spot. All right, well, I'm starting to see what I want. All right. Next phase. I'm going to add, I reckon the next thing I'll do before I get carried away, there's going to be a beautiful reflection here. The hill lit up, so I'll put a reflection. I'll put it in first now before I put any more darks, and that way I've got a beautiful light tone reflection. I can flick the darks around just around the edges of it. It should work out. Okay. Just get a bit of that cad yellow and red and the tiniest bit of white and mix up a lovely pale orange colour. So I'm just going to work out where I reckon. I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to that colour. This is going to be the reflection of the lit up cliff in the water. Just want to get the colour on. I'll put a bit of burnt sienna as well into mixing different tones. So we've got some burnt sienna and yellow ochre and all those bright cad colours. Take that all the way down to where... Let's have a look, what have we got here? Make it a few bits like that. Okay, alright. Yep. Just working out all my edges where I want the actual water's edge to be, so that'll be around about there. And we'll go down. Okay, so now it's beautiful and smooth and clean. Now I've got that in, now I feel like I can build all the foreground shadows in over it. Okay, so we'll go to a slightly bigger knife now. I reckon we'll use some burnt sienna and magenta and white. Give a bit of that ultramarine to make up a nice weedy kind of colour of the weed in the shadows. Let's just have a look. It's not bad, a bit more blue, a bit more white. Before I go any further, while well, I was just trying to give the feeling of the difference between the foreground blocked in weed and the reflection, 
what I might actually do is just put some darks in. So I'll go for some ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson and burnt sienna, some real solid darks. There'll be a few rocks over here so I'll stick some of that in. Feed it right into the corner. darks there. I might just lighten them. They're a tad further away so I'm using more of a blue and magenta back there. There'll be a couple of darks in the cliffs here. Not too many, just a few here and there. A few green bushes in the shadows. Feeling our way around at the moment, just feeling the way around. That's quite dark. I like to put my darks in first, then, then you can put the lighter tones on top. A few darks here and there, not too many. What have we got? A yellow oak. Okay, now, this here and yellow oak. Looks like a bit of a cool blue and white here. Half mix it with that little bit of brew. Let's have a look. Yeah, we don't want it too cold. It's mainly the burnt sienna and yellow ochre brew. So that's, this is just the undertone of the cliff itself. A bit of rope is in it. Where do I want that to go? We've got this one's going that way, that one's going that way. nicely off to the edges covering the board or the canvas in this instance. Let's make that lovely there. There we go, just get those shadows in. Of uh, Viridian green and white, a little bit of magenta and white, mixing up a few shadow tones here, atmospheric shadow tones, a little bit of blue with it, just on the top of the hill here. This is going to be a little bit cooler. Just introducing some of those cool tones now. covered. Just trying to give the feeling of the cliffs and the different random marks. Right. Yeah, a lot of tones. Magentas and blues. Greens. Bit of sand and stuff on the edges here. A bit more of the earth colours as it gets closer. 
slightly less atmospheric. So with the Bansianas and Blues kind of graze it off a bit. Let's get that all covered in lovely there. Lovely beach sand colours. All going in. Covering the edges here. Starting to get something. Okay, now, give me some of that ultramarine blue and white. I'll get that horizon blocked in where I put the tape. I'll try a tiny bit of Viridian Green with that. So it's ultramarine blue with a little bit of Viridian Green thrown in. Let's see what we've got. So now when I put it on, It's going to be, it's going to be level, it's going to be straight, it's going to be very, very easy to work out what we're doing there without making some crooked mess. People are really green in that mix. Okay, so now we take that tape off. That's it, we've got ourselves a horizon line. Perfect. Right, bit of burn sienna on white, magenta, some of that lovely weed tone. Pull that in there. Into mix. Do that a little out there. Here on blues. Good for writing short marks here and there. Okay. Clean the darks. Just feel that edge where I want the waterline to be. With some darks. Okay, now let's keep that water going a bit. Let's get some more blue and white, really and green. Nicely up to the edge. It's got a lovely clean edge on the side. Just folding, getting establishing that headland a bit. Okay, so we've pretty much established that. Now, the colours on this one. A little bit of burnt sienna thrown in with it. The 
with the blue and the white. Get all that paint in there. Blue, burnt sienna, white, ultramarine blue that is. Getting stuck into that blue now, that's for sure. <laughs> Twang of Viridian green thrown into the works. Burnt sienna in here. Let's get everything covered right up to the edges. Okay. It's all happening there. Right, they're getting there, yes. Let's get that in. Okay. A little bit of blending now, like so. Right, white, blue. I reckon I'm up to the next phase. Yeah, I reckon I'm up to the next phase. I'll stop on that one. Just make sure I've got enough. Get back into this top corner over here. Just make sure I've got enough shadow where I need it. We'll get that sky in because that's the biggest difference. There's obviously a lot blocked in now. We've got to get that sky in. All right, I'll stand back and have a look. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, mainly burnt sienna. We'll go burnt sienna. Tons of white. That knife there. So I want to create the atmospheric effect that you get on the horizon in the early morning, rather than just the blue. Let's have a look. Not too far off. Now, obviously, I won't touch that blue water yet, because I'll get myself in all sorts of strife. Just get that paint in. Close but not quite touching. Getting there, but you can see straight away we've got a no fuss horizon. That's close to how we want it without making some big smudgy mess. That's crooked anyway. It's quite often good to work upwards if you're working like this rather than pull down with the knife. Get 
get enough paint on. that I've got enough of this brown before I change to my next layer of colour. There we go. Right. Next layer of colour, which had more yellow ochre in it. More of the yellow ochre and white. Oops. You can afford to put plenty of this yellow ochre because with the uh, morning or evening effect, there's always tons of those earthy colours in the blue sky itself. And I'll get to using the blues, but for now, I'll just put some of these beautiful atmospheric colours in. Look at that, beautiful atmospheric colours. Okay. ultramarine blue and white with a little bit of that yellow ochre mix in the mix. Quite a light tone to start with. A bit more of that yellow ochre earthy. Even a little bit more yellow ochre I reckon. more blue more of a clean blue now so it's got less of the other atmospheric colors as it gets higher Always a good thing. Okay, now I'll bring those two together. This is where the true workout comes in when you start blending these together. You get the RSI. What I want to do is actually introduce the blending. So I want to actually blend that beautiful yellow ochre up into those blues. And likewise, bring them down this way. Out. Gets the job done. Okay. You can see the yellow ochre gets absorbed pretty quickly into this mix. Purposely pull that right up into that. Okay, 
Getting me worn out, let's change to this hand, shall we? <laughs> Either way, it's just getting the blending going on. Look at that lovely stuff. I don't know what we can do, where are we? Here we go. <laughs> That'll get the job done. As long as I don't wear any over there, it's mix, mix, mix. It's all about just blending at the moment, so many hands make light work. So here we go, look at that. You can see those atmospheric colours now are blending more into what you'd imagine they would do on a atmospheric day like so. Okay. Let's pop these two in the bin. Gonna need a bit of paper towel. So I'm bringing that blue right down, close on the horizon now. But at the same time, it's got those beautiful atmospheric colours. So when you look at it, you go, yeah, it's a blue sky. There's something atmospheric about it. That's the idea. So I'm doing a lot of variety of marks here on purpose to try and give the feeling of busyness and detail. One, it makes the canvas more interesting, it's not such a flat surface. But two, when you have light in the sky, it seems to dance around in your eyes, so. Light seems to dance in your eyes. And by having those warm and cool contrasts there, jumping against each other like that, it's really giving the feeling the illusion of light. Can you hear some of those atmospheric blues and yellow ochres and all the stuff I've done? Now. I was saying, get it into the water. Bits of it here and bits of it there. Yep, 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 yep. Keep on going, keep on going. A little bit deeper maybe. Bringing those colours in, creating waves and else we need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just introducing it into the sky.
Probably not. I'll just pull that back in there to get the feeling of where the edge of the cliff is. Pull that down there like so. Soften that. Soften that. Okay, a bit more of the yellow oak okay. and burnt sienna. Just want to feel it in some waves in the foreground here. Just water a whole lot of paint. Bit of fun there. Okay. Let's do a quick bin run. Okay, now with a bit of ultramarine blue and magenta, tons of white, just going to mix up a lovely right on the horizon haze out effect. Let's see what colour we've got here. It's just got to be a bit more blue. and a lot more white. Mix it up as quick as I can. Okay, so now the idea of this is as you go right off into the distance, there's so much atmosphere between you and the horizon. You're looking into a haze. So it actually gets greyed. So I'm using these bluey mauves mixed with uh, mixed with those warm tones and ascending into a lovely grey to make it recede. It seems like a lot of work to do on the sky, but what it's doing is it's turning the sky into a subject itself. There's so much variety of colour going on in there now. But you can hold your interest hold the viewer's interest for a long time. They can just sit there, sit back in their lounge and just look at all the different colours. But at the same time, we're also giving the feeling of a realistic world. A beautifully coloured realistic world. Now you could use a brush to blend all these and I have done that. But I'm not going to be doing that at the moment because I like the idea of just using the palette knife. And the palette knife seems to leave it a little bit more unmixed so you get the variety that we're talking about. The variety of colour. It's really starting to get the feeling of distance now and pull it right down to the water's edge now. It's time. It's time to start bringing it down. Wiping the knife clean each time. Another piece of towel. Just keep on blending it first. Now if this wasn't so far off in the distance, this horizon, if you had a mountain range for example, you could be a lot more blasé, but because this we're seeing a long way into the distance, it's got to be extremely straight, otherwise it will no longer look like a horizon of water. It could look like a mountain range or anything. Okay, now, with an even cleaner knife, it's going to like pull through. Now that sometimes going to wreck the edge, but it's softening, it's giving distance. 
we'll have to clean it just a little bit. So. Okay, now I'll just get a bit of those blues and greens from earlier that I had over there, just in case I needed them. Now the fun part here is I'm going to have to bring these two together. And when you're bringing warm and cool contrast together, it's always going to be, it could easily be mud, so you don't over mix it so. Have a very, very clean knife as you do it. Pull through. You can actually see, I can see myself where that blue is mixing with that orange and creating a darker tone, not a clean tone. So, just use a bit more magenta in it rather than a green blue, and hopefully that'll even it up, which I think it has. a little bit more magenta in it. Okay. Just dance a few of those colours. These colours are going to be in the cliff later on. Jutting a few rocks and things around here. Okay, now what I'm going to do, which will make a big difference to the look of the painting, is I'm going to start putting some of the light source. So far we're working in shadow all through here. I'm going to put some of the direct light source of the morning sun. Oh, what fun that'll be. So we're using CAD colours. The brightest high key colours we can mix with reds and yellows and a bit of white, but mainly yellow to lighten it. Real high key colours, tiny bit of white. Let's have a look. Just want to see what I've got. It's not bad. With a clean knife. Just going to lightly put it on. Going to mix up a magenta and white over here. This always looks nice when you go magenta and white. Half mix it with those yellows. Give you a beautiful soft tone. And then you just feel where the light's licking. Got some really nice tones coming in here. shadow into it to soften those edges. Just bring them down into it itself. Just ever so lightly touching. Taking some paint off to create the feeling of light and shadow striking that cliff. can see a light tone coming in now, I'll go to the next phase. Magentas and greens. We have a light tone here. The cool complementary colours from the cliff. You can't actually judge the colours until like I couldn't judge that exactly right until I put the orange on. And once the orange was there, then I could see I needed more of those colours in there. That's how it works. That's why you shouldn't finish anything too much right from the word go because you can't judge the colour unless you've got all the colours on there. Yeah. 
<laughs> I've nearly got the colours on me. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Let's pick up some of those cool reflectives. Those colours there are coming from the sky. Reflecting in to the shadows and adding more interest to them. I keep leaning back so I don't have to get back so far to judge. Just drag a few of those tones through there. Some of these light greens and cool magentas and blues. Let's bring them in. Nicely like so. Smear them to add variety. Just a bit more red in that orange. So I've got some cad yellows here and some cad reds. I just want to go a little bit more red dominant. Because when it hits the blue, the blue really knocks it. So if you've got a bit of red with it. Stops it. It seems to stop getting eaten up by the cool colours. Just adding some. This is the beauty of a palette knife. You can put clean paint straight over the top, very cleanly and strongly straight over the top of uh, you know cool colours and whatever and. Those warm tones are not getting too damaged by it. Clean knife just really pull through. It's making the ripples of the waves and the whatever else. Now I just get a few darker tones. Let's have a look what we got here. Burnt sienna. Blue's just darkening the tone a bit. I want a nice neutral dark tone. Because in these waves that are just lapping in, in the morning it's hard to see into them because uh, the light's coming from the angle so you can't see in. So the waves usually are quite dark in tone, I find. Whereas in the middle of the day that could be a bright turquoise wave. Soft reflective day. So with a clean knife, I'm just pulling through quite gently, really. When you vary the marks, to break up too much monotonism. Flick a bit of pure colour here and there as those waves just on different angles are catching a bit of light. You can start to see all that uh, hard work at the start was placed there. Took my time to get it there so I could now put these beautiful colours in. Without that cool sort of undertone, nothing that's going on, you've got nothing to rest your really beautiful high key colours. Directing the eye with these high key colours, directing the viewer's eye through the pony. So I've got the knife on the edge, on top of a wet blue paint, completely wet blue paint, and we can get away with it because we're using a knife with the oil paint. So I'm dancing colours right out here that are right away from the reflection, but what you've got to realise is when there's little ripples, you're not just going to get the reflect, you'll mainly get the reflection directly below, but you'll also get them here because as a wave turns up, 
then it's reflecting to there and then reflecting to your eye. So you're going to also get little bits all over, but the main bulk of it's going to be here. Not only that, it helps to uh, blend the composition and add more interest everywhere. Okay, now I've just introduced a tiny bit of phthalo blue with the yellow ochre. I just wanted something a little stronger. Phthalo blue is a very strong blue. I wanted a little bit more for my accents and a little bit more in the sky, I reckon. The sky is reflecting beautiful, strong colours like that in here. Let's put some on the edge like that. Let's pull a couple through. Let's catch you on the back of the wave reflecting from up here. But with a larger knife, now it's a crazy strong colour. It's going to affect the whole thing I've been doing up here, but like I said, you never finish anything without doing something to the other, so you're constantly working around. So what I'm doing here is making up a nice high key colour with the yellow ochre and the phthalo. Just kind of a green almost. Just add that into that middle bit of sky. It just really makes it pop. And at this time of day, if you have a close look, you quite often see that little little tinge of green. Just just where you've got the ochres here, the blues up there. Quite often you'll get this little bit of green just in this area. So we'll just blend some of that in and do that. Yeah, that's really starting to give the feeling of that time of day. And of course, there's also a little bit, you gotta remember this is reflecting, so there's bits of it running through here even. It's pulling through nicely. Creates the feeling of those waves. And also there's a bit of an offshore breeze and it's kind of creating little patterns of slack water running off into the distance. Like so, just little slack water. Kind of makes these beautiful little ripply feelings like so. Just pull through. Just gives you that feeling that you've got a little bit of breeze on the water, but then there's these little slack water patches that are just catching the light. Like so. A bit more of this green in here. It seems to be a nice colour. It's bouncing into this darker water now. Now, a little bit more blue. Just needs to be a bit stronger down here. Let's have a look what we got. Starting to give the feeling of the time of day that I'm after. Just need to be careful there because that's a beautiful headlamp. I just want to bring a bit of that tone closer to the headlamp, but I definitely do not want to smudge the beautiful warm colours of down there. Looking over the ocean on a beautiful, calm, reflective day. Just cleaning up a little bit here and adding some variety of marks. It's got a one of main I'm scraping back, because underneath so there's a lot of yellow ochre there now. There's not much of that Bernstein or brown left, but by scraping, I'm just bringing that in. That's just giving that slight pinky sort of feeling. Particularly down low there, you get a lot of that on the horizon. Just that slight feeling of pinkiness, and that could be clouds or whatever you want it to be. That's it. Just soften 
get rid of those hard edges. I like to have the uh, painting thickly painted. Quite often, the bottom edges there of the sky, you don't want to cast too much of a shadow because you've got to remember the sky is all about distance. It's great to have thick chunks up here. If you want the distance to recede, it's best not to have too many chunky sticking out because when the light from the gallery hits down on it, it'll land on those chunky bits in You've got all these subtle tones that won't be seen because all the viewer's eye is seeing is the harsh shadows from the thick paint rather than the subtle tones. So in the distance where you've only got subtle tones it's best to keep the paint thin I reckon. Anyway, and then really thicken up in other places. That way you get those beautiful contrasts too between thick and thin. starting to really get there now. I'm really starting to enjoy what's going on here. Just constantly moving around the canvas. You can see these rocks here. I've added some nice little reflections underneath. Okay, now it's all about just the finishing details of light here. I just want to put the odd highlight or two. I just drop one in here. It's very important now not to get carried away. Like we've got the big lead up, the painting's leading in beautifully. Now it's just about a few refining complementary highlights. Just trying to work out exactly what I want. I reckon about here. Let's have a look. Just like that. That's that's probably enough. I'll just stand back and have a quick look. All right, yes, yeah, pretty happy with what's going on now. I've got the big impression, which obviously was that light striking the headlands, that beautiful morning light and then the reflection. Now you've noticed at the start how I was playing all the low key shadow colors and the cool tones and that was all getting ready for that grand finale, those big highlights there. Pretty happy with that. There's a few extra little ones dancing around and in amongst that reflection of orange, I stuck the complementary color of blue which really makes it pop. Because when you've got the opposite side of the color wheel, if you've got orange and in the case of orange it's blue, put them next to each other, your eyes can't quite focus on them both at the same time and that's what makes them vibrate in your eyes so much. So the painting's based on the warm and cool color concept here and a beautiful calm day. Now you can see in the water itself, there's a slight offshore breeze on this particular day and so when you get that you get the water just just lightly lifting up little waves which means you're looking into the water a bit so it goes a darker tone but then you get areas where there's slack water where the wind's not blowing and it kind of almost looks like an oil slick and that's what I've put through here where you've got it's reflecting the sky more than looking into the water and what that's been what that's doing in this particular piece is it's leading your eyes in as a compositional device beyond the main subject and up into the secondary subject which of course is that beautiful coloured sky. On the whole yeah pretty happy with what I've done. Okay well if you like the video remember to give the thumbs up, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Also if you haven't already subscribed go ahead and do that and hit that notification bell that way you'll be made aware of any of these videos and you won't miss them as they come up. Alright, well thanks again for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.